In this lesson, we will be discussing using pylons and lines in a 3D world. If you'd like to follow with this video, please open the file 0301 using pylons in a 3D world.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the working with this dataset video. So let's talk about wireframe modeling. Wireframe modeling consists of using lines and pylons in the 3D realm. We will discuss some of the notations and techniques that you can use to get the model that you want. We will also discuss some of the modification tools. So what we're going to do in this lesson is we're actually going to build a wireframe roof. As you can see here in my completed drawing, I've got a wireframe roof with hatching, and here it is in the shaded view. So let's go ahead and do it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to actually create two viewports. So we'll go to the viewport controls, viewport configuration list, and select two vertical. This way we have the ability to actually see what's happening in one viewport and possibly also define different UCSs in the other viewports as necessary. What I have so far is some arcs to aid in the construction of the roof. Right now, the UCS is set to the world coordinate system. The way that I created these arcs was I simply rotated the UCS to the different orientations to draw the arcs that I needed to. We'll go ahead and do the same thing right now, because the first thing we want to do is create a polygon, and then we'll use the arc to trim out the rest of the side of the roof. So I'll simply pick the UCS icon, pick the square blue grip, and we'll go ahead and move the UCS icon over there. We now need to rotate the UCS icon so it points straight up where the arc is. So I'll just simply pick the Y axis and I'll use polar tracking to go straight up. You could snap to the quadrant of the circle, but this is much easier. Now my plane is on this part of the arc. So let's go ahead and start the command. We'll start the polygon command. We want a six sided roof. We want the center of the arc as our point. And we want this to be inscribed inside the circle. And then I'll simply snap to the other side of the arc. I now need to do the other side. Again, simply grab the UCS icon and snap to the endpoint of the arc there. We'll go ahead and also start the polygon command, six sides, grab the center, inscribed, and then snap to the other quadrant. Now for this one here, for this side, I can simply take the X and rotate the X axis. While I'm at this location, I can simply lock it like that. And now we're on this plane of this arc. So we'll go ahead and run the polygon command. Enter six for six sided, pick, inscribed, and then I wanna make sure I get the endpoint. So I'll shift middle click and I will snap to the endpoint. Now, before I do so, one thing to notice is this is one of the limitations of the 2D polyline or the polyline command is it only works in one plane. You can't define in any other planes, but the UCS that the current viewport is set to. So I'll simply snap here. And again, I'll now move the UCS icon to this location here. We're already at the same orientation, so we can simply move it like that. We'll start the polygon command, press enter for six, grab the center of the arc here, inscribed, and snap to the endpoint. Now, while we're at this view here, we need to trim out bottom portion. So since the UCS is already set here, let's just start the trim tool right over here in the modify panel. I have the arc, press enter, and trim, and we're done. Now let's just see what happens if I start doing this on the other hexagons. We'll start this as a trim, press enter, and then pick. Notice the error that you get. Object is perpendicular to UCS XY plane. So you can't do the trim on objects that were defined in a different UCS. So you will have to actually move this to those UCSs every single time. We'll start the trim tool, pick, and press enter. And for this one here, I'll simply rotate my X like so, and then move it like that. Again, being able to grip edit the UCS icon helps tremendously. And we'll move to that lastly here. And there we have our completed roof outline. I'm gonna go ahead and freeze using the layer freeze command. And now I've got the outline of what I want to do. I've changed my coordinate system back to the WCS. And now I'm gonna simply use the line command to draw in the wireframe parts for the finished roof. We'll eventually use the trim command to of course trim out the parts that we don't want. I'm just pressing enter twice to begin and end the line command. Again, you might have to shift middle click to rotate your view to correctly see the orientation of how you're drafting those lines. Now, the last thing that we need to do, and then we can begin trimming out and hatching, is we need to create some sort of line or lines that we can actually trim out the middle part here. If we look at the completed drawing, we have a completed roof where this part here goes all the way down to there. So what you can use is actually something called the 3D polyline command. The 3D polyline command is similar to the 2D polyline command, except it allows you to change the Z direction. 
so you can draw a line all the way through the different vertices as you need to. The 3D Polyline command is in the Home tab, Draw Panel, and we have the 3D Polyline command. You can also type in 3P if you're a keyboard type person. I'll grab the intersection of that line, the intersection of that line, again, Shift, Middle Click to rotate your view to get a different orientation, and lastly here, we'll get one right there. And now I've got the geometry that I need to go ahead and trim out stuff. Now there are some problems with the trim command depending on the current UCS and the UCS that was used to create these objects. But we'll go ahead and just start it and then we can make modifications as we need to. We'll start the trim command. And let's just go ahead and start trimming out over here. So I'll pick these two lines here. And there's the first one and there's the second one. I'll press enter again. We'll do this in stages. And now for this one here, I want to grab this one here and that one there. Press enter, pick and then pick. And lastly, we've got the one over here. So I'll press enter and then enter again to start the command again. And we'll pick these two lines, pick and then pick, press enter, and then trim them out like so. Again, if you don't get the desired result, you can always use grip editing to simply select a line or an object and use the grips to then snap to the different parts of your geometry. These objects here, they were just construction objects. And now I've got my somewhat completed roof. So now all I want to do is I want to hatch. So hatching works just like the 2D polyline command in that you cannot simply hatch and expect it to work. You have to change the UCS to the correct plane. So I'll go ahead and select my UCS icon. I'll pick over here. We'll go to the midpoint of this line here. My X is correct, but my Y is incorrect. So I'll pick the Y axis and snap to the midpoint. Now we'll start the hatch command. I want a brick type hatch, so I've got the ARB 816. And we'll go ahead and just hover, and you should be able to pick points. Sometimes you don't get the desired results, but I'll just go ahead and click right here, and we've got the correct hatching. Press enter, and now I'll go ahead and move my UCS. We'll go around the building here. So we'll pick over here, I'll snap to the end point of this, and let's go ahead and do the top of the roof, put the UCS icon, pick the Y, and we'll snap like so. Now we can hatch again. Pick over here, we've got what we want. Pick over here, we've got what we want. And then we'll pick over here to get this side of the roof. We'll pick the Y axis and rotate it to that direction there. And let's go ahead and see what happens now. Let's go ahead and hatch. I'll click in here. Notice how you get an error that says closed boundary could not be determined. So you may get some instances where this happens. Don't panic, don't undo, try and redraw stuff or draw a shape on top of this. You can use the select option here and watch what we can actually do. Now what I'm going to do is I'll make sure that I have selection cycling turned on because what this allows me to do is that it allows me to pick different objects on top of other objects. I'll go ahead and click here. Notice how the icon for selection cycling appears and I want the line. So it selects the line. We'll pick this one here. Again, don't start panicking, even though you might see some funky results. We'll go ahead and pick this object here. Still not seeing what we want. We will in a second. And we'll pick here. I want the pie line. And then now, as you can see, it has completed and figured out the area that we want to hatch. Press enter and continue hatching. So again, even though you may get undesired results, you can use the select object option to get the hatching that you need. We'll click over here and there's our hatching. And then we'll pick over here and keep rotating around. We'll get the same issue here. That's okay. We'll click close. We'll go to select. I'll pick here. With selection cycling turned on, it makes life a lot easier. In the old days, you'd have to hold the shift spacebar down to cycle between the objects that were on top of each other. What's really cool too is that even though my UCS is over here and it's outside the views area, by default, it puts it down to the lower left corner and you can then pick it as you need to. So I'll move it to the midpoint here, put the Y there, and I'll put the X there. Pick, same error, no problem. Pick select, and select the objects you need to create the hatch. And lastly, we'll go ahead and just pick the UCS icon and move it to this side here. There's that. Move the Y here and move the X there. We'll go to hatch, try it, doesn't work, that's okay. We'll pick select and pick our geometry as necessary. And there's our completed hatch.
So lastly, if you wanted to add some sort of shading, you could do so. Starting in, in AutoCAD 2012 and above, you could put solids behind hatching. In previous versions of AutoCAD, you'd actually just create a separate solid hatch. So I'm going to go ahead and select this object, one of my hatching. And this is a nice little tip here. If you've never used these tools before, right click and then choose Select Similar. This will select all the objects on that layer with the same settings. And I'll simply go to the solid area here. And let's say we want to make this color cyan. And there's our completed roof, shading and everything. Now, if you wanted to plot this, we haven't gone over plotting yet, but we will in future videos. I already have a predefined layout set up. As you can see, you can get the desired output the way you'd like it to. This concludes this video discussing using polylines and lines in a 3D world.